let's see. There's nine people in this group. So uh, Diana, I got a bunch of people in here. I see you just joined, so that's good. Okay. So now yeah. I can see people in the group and I can see the chat window, but I can't get Eaglesoft to run. So we're gonna just talk through this, I guess. Uh, I think that might be the easiest way to do this. Um, and then we'll have to figure out something else in order to be able to do screen shares. Uh, guys, so everybody knows, I see that there's 11, 13 people joining in. Um, uh, a lot of the uh, video chat features on all of the, the platforms um, are not working very well this morning. Um, Zoom um, is limiting people to um, very few users joining the group. Um, we tried to use the screen share this morning um, for this chat, but it is not working. Um, so we're going to try to talk through some of these things. I have on the I have on speakerphone with me on my end, uh, Diana Boris from the PTC. Diana, say hi. Hi, everyone. So glad you can join us today. Cool. So she's going to help me talk through some of this stuff. Um, and I, we were hoping we were going to be able to show you. So um, Diana, I guess if you open up Eaglesoft on your side, I'll open up on my side. So as we go, we'll just kind of, we'll talk everybody through it as if we were talking to a bunch of blind people, you know? I think that might be the easiest way to do it. Um, without, you know, and I, I live for having screenshots, so this is really, really tough, but we tried and uh, it took us about almost 15 minutes to figure out that it wasn't gonna work the way we wanted it to. So we're gonna talk you through some of the processes of doing some, some cleanup work um, both in the edit patient screen, the employer screen, um, the insurance company screens. Um, and um, hopefully what I'll do is based on this, we'll also do some screenshots. Um, but as you guys know, there are some threads already in the field guide that have screenshots for sort of the things we're talking about. And most of you guys, if you've been working with EagleSoft for a long time, you kind of know these screens. So, so Diana, let's talk about the, um, First things first, the edit patient screen. Um, and one of the things that came up while we were talking is the recall notes field. And you had a great idea about that. Yep. So the recall notes field is, like Andre said, in the edit patient window. And it's not labeled real well, but when you um, open up that window, it's in the upper right-hand corner. And it's really just a freeform text box. So think of it that way. Anything that you put, you can put anything in there. Um, the nice thing about the recall notes field is that it's very searchable. And by that I mean you can go into the money finder and find all patients that match um, with that whatever text you've put into that recall note. Yeah. So I'm in the past, people have used that recall note field to track maybe people who like to pay, play golf. If the doctor's going to have, you know, like some kind of golf event that he wants to invite his patients to. Um, so when we think about what's going on now in the world today, though, you can use that recall note field to track patients that you may need to contact when your practice, you know, start seeing, you know, patients normally again. Um, but I would definitely come up with some kind of naming convention because it is an exact word match. Meaning if you capitalize, it needs to be capitalized. If you, you know, if you want to track patients that need to have, you know, come back in for a crown placement. Maybe you could just type, use, you know, think of the word crown and use that in there. You can also use multiple text notes in there that are separated by commas. So if you put in the recall note field crown, comma, perio, then you could do a search just for crown and it would find that patient and you could do a search just for perio and it would find that patient. Yeah, I'll tell you one of the things I used in our yeah. office was to be able to uh, figure out um, which specialists we sent our patients to. And we would do, oh, you know, Smith, Johnson, you know, Robinson, whatever, um, Endo Associates. And then we'd be able to run, and we we're gonna get to this, Money Finder to be able to see that. So that, I, this is a great idea. I, and is, you said it's case sensitive? I believe so. Okay. I, I will have to test that out for sure. But I've always been a firm believer in just making sure it's an exact match. I agree. But yep. definitely you can separate the notes by commas and it would, it'll it still find, you know, those individual notes by, you know, that are separated by commas. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, so yeah. this is this is, and I think if, if anybody's come over from Softent, Softent used to have um, little letter keys, and it, you know I, when I when I worked with offices back in the day, uh, people who came over from Softent had those things in their software. I would tell them that uh, you can still utilize those things here. Uh, as an example, P for perio patients, I for implant patients, W for whitening patients, and just like Diana saying, if you put commas there, you could do a search for all of your perio patients with an implant who've also had whitening, you know, and have also been referred out to Dr. Jones. So it's a great tool to be able to do that. And like we said, as we're cleaning up the software, what we're doing is building some processes so that when we're back open, up and running, we can do some searches to be able to sort of target market to our patients, things that we want to bring back in and get them up and running. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, just think of it as a way to find patients, you know, that meet a certain criteria. And there's other ways we can do that in the software, but this is a quick, easy way, just like Andre said, if you're in there kind of doing some patient cleanup, great opportunity to use that recall note field. Yeah, and Philip, just, uh, I guess a couple people who just came in, so I'll answer the question for Philip who came in. Uh, okay, so if you open the edit patient uh, window, and if you go down the first column, you have name, address, telephone number, that kind of stuff. Middle column, you start with chart ID and you go down the list. And then the third column starts with a box. I'm on version 19 and it, version 19, I'm sorry, version 20. Version 20 does not show a title there. I don't know if it's just my screen. Do you know if that's a, a, a normal thing? I, I'm on 21 and I noticed the same thing. I think it used to be labeled recall notes. Yeah. But it's there All right. So there's a box at the top unlabeled. It's just above your uh, next recall. And in that field is the field we're talking about. So you could put in, um, again, you could put in letter codes. If you, you know, again, make sure you have a, a key at your office. You know, everybody needs a Rosetta Stone in order to be able to understand what these things mean. But, you know, again, in my office, we did I for implants, W for whitening, P for perio, et cetera, et cetera. And then that way we would also be able to search patients who have an implant, who had whitening, who are also with Dr. Jones. So if you come up with these things and Diana made the suggestion, make sure you're putting commas in between. Um, and also if you make, you know, and this is one of the things you hear me talk about all the time in the Facebook group, uh, be very consistent with the way you're doing it. Because if yep. at some point you were searching for Dr. Smith um, and you were writing in there something like, um, I see hygienists all the time putting things in there like patient only once a profi every 12 months. And now we go back and we're searching for people who um, have the number 12. Well, we can't find if we were using 12 as a, as a key because 12 will come up as 12 month recall. So be very, very consistent with the way you guys are doing it. Otherwise you're gonna have some muddy reports when you, when you get to it. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So now that we've shown you where that information gets stored in the patient's file, the way to be able to search for that information is to go, and I'm going to talk you through this because we weren't able to get the uh, screen share uh, going, but if we go up to activities, at the, we're at the main screen, main uh, front desk screen is an easy way to know what I'm talking about. Front desk screen, we're going to go to activities, go down to practice management, and then scroll over to what's called the money finder. And the money finder is my favorite tool in the whole world. I mean, when I found this, oh, oh, when I found this 20 years ago, it was like I found a whole new practice in my practice, you know? So if you open up money finder, if you look midway down left column, it says recall notes include. And that's where you're gonna put that letter code that we just talked about. So again, in my office, if I put I comma Jones, I'd have all of my implant patients who went to Dr. Jones. And we can get even more specific because now I can go down to put in the, uh, the actual specific uh, uh, ADA code or service code and say, show me everybody who had an implant who went to Dr. Jones, who've been back in for a ortho, I mean, for implant maintenance visit. Uh, you can do just about anything in that field. Um, and you can say, only show me those people with insurance or without insurance who came in between this time and this time or between this age and that age. So now we've got a tool to be able to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the database. Yeah, there, I mean, the, the opportunities are endless in what you can do with Money Finder with this um, criteria search. So um, there's a lot of different opportunities. You can find patients that have had a root canal, but not a crown. That's my favorite. You can find 
yeah, patients that have had scaling and root planning, planing done, but never a perio maintenance. Maybe patients that have had, um, you know, have, that are scheduled, but never had a comprehensive exam completed. So just lots of opportunities here on how you can use the money finder. Yeah, and Brandy said she couldn't find it. Okay, so Brandy, let me, let me take you back. So again, at the front desk screen, so the, the screen, I mean, the, the EagleSoft screen where you see the virtual front desk, up at the very top, it starts with file, and the next, the next uh, heading is activities. So we're going to go to activities. We're going to go down about three quarters of the way to practice management, and then over to what's called money, the, the money finder. And that's where you're going to find the money in the practice. All right. This is, the, I, I say this is, all, I tease, this is always the precursor to the uh, well of revenue. <laughs> or revenue well. So, all right. So this is the way to be able to dig into the practice and to see some of the things that you can find. I mean, this is this is a fantastic opportunity for people who, you know, they, they say uh, suck timber, where things are slow in September. Well, it's a great opportunity to run this report and say, show me everybody between seven years old and 14 years old um, who have insurance, who lack um, sealants. It's a great opportunity to bring kids back in who've never had sealants, who qualify pretty much for, and I hate to use this, but this is the way I'm going to put it, qualify for free sealants. So we could bring them back in and do sealants um, at pretty much no out-of-pocket expense. So you can run this report and be able to do some things that are pretty interesting. Yeah, even, so think about, you know, fast forward to October when you've got patients that, you know, want to maximize their benefits remaining. You could look for patients that have, you know, Anywhere from a hundred, you know, a, you know, to a thousand dollars left in benefits remaining, and maybe they have some planned services. You could say they have any planned service in their treatment plan, and then you can find a list of customers, you know, patients to call to, to fill your chairs. So exactly, lots of lots of possibilities. Yeah. And, and like I said, once you start using Money Finder and, and realizing, you know, some of the nuances that are available there to you, the, the, the great part about it is, and again, this is where we're going to go next. Once you start cleaning up your data, the cleaner the data, the cleaner that the report comes back is going to be because now we can, you know, we can really target patients that we're, we're looking for, you know, patients with insurance as opposed to patients without. If we've got a lot of patients who are tagged to insurance who really don't have it, we're going to get bad data. Right. So the now, nice thing about sorry about the money finder is you can print a report or you can export your patients to in contact. I don't know if anybody wants to do labels or letters anymore, but you can you know you can do that as well. So a lot of different outputs for this data. And if you guys haven't used in contact, maybe that'll be another session that we'll that we'll go through yeah. another day because that's a great tool too. And then that, that's actually let, let's talk about that for a second because here's the thing. You know, people are always asking in the Facebook group about printing reports. I'm not a huge report printer, especially, you know, when people ask, right. you know, they want to have a paperless office, but then they're asking how many reports they can print. In Contact is an electronic report. So you could send people to In Contact and then work it the same way. I mean, when I was in dentistry, you know, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, you know, we had to print these reports and, you know, pull off the dot matrix uh, panels on the side, you know, and actually go down those lists and write in the margins. Well, within contact, it gives you a space to write in the margins where you've had contact with patients, where you've talked to patients. It's a fantastic tool. So I get, I, good idea. We should right. do, we should do a, a thing about that too. So yeah. let's talk about the, um, let's talk about the low hanging fruits, which is um, insurance companies. So the way I look at it is when people ask me about how do I clean up things, I always look at what is the easiest thing to clean up and then what's the next hardest and the next hardest. Well, typically we have more patients than we have insurance. I mean, I'm sorry, employers. And then we have less uh, employer, um, insurance companies than we have insurance companies. I'm sorry, employers, boy, I can't say it today. So let's talk about going to, actually, do you want to talk about the um, utility to purge insurance companies? Oh, okay. You're gonna you're gonna make me think on this one a little bit. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'll, let me describe where it is for everybody knows who I, what I'm talking about. Yeah. And and this can't hurt anything anybody. So you know this is not gonna right. mess anybody up. But if we go to utilities, and again, every the people who do this have to have the um, security profile in order to be able to do this anyway. But if I go to utilities and go to purge options, all right, uh -huh. there is the ability to remove duplicate insurances. 
Now, I'm saying that really slow because I want to be really clear so everybody understands this. They have to be duplicates. And that can't be Delta Dental of Pennsylvania as opposed to Delta Dental of Penna as opposed to Delta Dental of Pennsylvania. <laughs> you know, because I live in Pennsylvania, right. I can't even spell it. So there's so many ways that I've seen it spelled in other offices. They have to be duplicated in the, both the, uh, the name, the address, and the phone number. Um, and then EagleSoft sees those as duplications, but you know, we'll talk about if you go to that remove duplicate insurances, um, it will actually, let's just call it purge what it can, what EagleSoft can. Um, right. And it kind of what, and it won't, it won't purge an insurance company if there's a claim associated with it as well. Exactly. So you can be you know, certain that it's not gonna remove anything that, that is truly being used in your practice. Yeah. And very much like people know, like if, if a patient has an outstanding claim, you can't like change their insurances from within the edit patient screen. EagleSoft is protecting itself, uh, you know, so it's not going to let you do anything that's going to harm the, the database. So, you know, you can rest assured that if you do this and you know, we, like we always say, you always want to have a good backup. It, matter of fact, there's a big red warning on that screen. So, you know, you want to make sure you have a, a good backup before you do any of this stuff. Um, but it's a great way to do things and it's a good start because it could get rid of a whole lot of sort of loose ends before we start to doing some of the other cleanup that can be done. Yep. Yep. And, it, and it also gives you a report out of what companies were deleted. So it'll tell you how many it searched, how many were deleted, how many they couldn't delete. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can even, it even outputs a report outside of EagleSoft that you can look at to see what companies were deleted. Yep. So and, there's, there's definitely a paper trail of you know what it actually did. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, in the, the last chat about there was a report to show patients who are inactive patients who are attached to um, insurance companies or employers. Right. And uh, yeah, that was that one's through the Money Finder again. So again, that wonderful tool that you should be using. But you can go to the Money Finder and use that to find inactive patients. So if you go to Money Finder, it'll say. Um, have an insurance status of, and you can select with insurance, and you can select um, in at, let me see here. So there's, yeah, so. Now, I, I yeah. think that's under, isn't that under patient master? Oh yeah, you're right. You're right, that one is under patient master. That's, yeah, so, pa and, uh, right. uh, so everybody knows, if you've ever gone into patient master or money finder, the screens look almost identical. The, the only difference is that I think there may be one or two yeah. other clicks, and I think that's one of them. So in Money Finder, you can add service codes, and in uh, the Patient Master, we can choose, um, I think, male, female, or, marital status, right. that kind of stuff. So or that's a little bit. Yep, you're exactly right. Yep, sorry yep. about that. But yeah, yeah the status, choose the status of inactive, and then you can also do insurance status of with insurance. Yep. And when we get the report, is it, is this one that we can send to Money Finder? I mean, to In Contact also? Um, this one, yes, you can send this one to In Contact. You could, you know, save it in the Smart Doc. You can automatically send a letter if you want to patients or just print it as a report. So cool. there are a lot of reports that can be sent to In Contact. So that's a, a great option to look for. Like Andre said, if you're truly trying to be paperless, In Contact's a great way to you know, to have that interactive report. Yeah. I, I actually had a, a doctor who uh, contacted me recently and he said that once I showed the office in contact, they went from printing like, I mean, or from buying like five boxes of, of printer paper every month to like one. <laughs> Just from that, okay. because the amount of reports that they were printing in order to be able to do some cleanup. So, uh, mm -hmm. so let's talk about- Smart, smart docs, your other great option. So instead of printing out your end of day reports and the month reports, you know, send them to smart box and then you can always go back and review them at any time. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about insurance companies and let's just say everybody go to list and then your insurance company list. And one of the things I, you know, I, I strongly recommend is that office offices will actually go through this list um, and clean up uh, your list a couple different ways. For one, I want you to go through your list and rename everything 
in a really clean, concise way. I always start with Delta because Delta has got the easiest nomenclature, easiest, you know, setup for names. And I always say just, you know, spell it out as Delta Dental of, and then your two digit um, state, PA, New Jersey, Delta, Delaware, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Um, Delta Dental of the Northeast is Delta Dental Northeast. Delta Dental of USA, Delta Dental of USA, easy enough. If you do that, you're gonna to start to see where your duplications show up. Uh, the same thing, look at, now you'll see the column uh, two over for um, your addresses. So again, I'm, I'm a bit of an OCD freak. So I wanna make sure it says PO space BOX space and then the, the, the PO box number. So if you're consistent with that, and then we can be consistent with the state and, and, and uh, city and state. Um, if you can start to do that, you're gonna to start to see where your duplication lies. Now, one of the things I don't like doing, and I, I'm sure you see this a lot, is people putting Zs in front of the name of insurance companies to sort of put them to the bottom of the list. You know, uh, that's okay, but it really doesn't get rid of them. All it does is just puts them to the bottom of your list. So what I kind of try to do is as I go through my list, I find the one that I know is a good one and I'll write, and I'm looking at my screen, I have Delta Dental of PA space, and then I have a plus sign. So I know that that is a good one. It's positive, I know it's good. Um, and that's how I de designate which one that I wanna use going forward. And that helps me so that as I look at my employer list, I look for those who are not connected to the plus sign, and I'm gonna move those to the ones who have the positive symbol after it. And that way I know that they're all good. Um, it, that, while I'm also doing that, the one that is um, listed as positive, I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna just sort of describe it, what I'm talking about. So my name of insurance, and I'm gonna use Delta Dental as, a, uh, as an example, Delta Dental of PA, and I have a plus sign after the name of that, PO box, and then put the PO box. Everything go, it should be consistent with it the way all the way down. Now, if everybody is looking at the screen that I'm looking at while we're talking, if you look at your payment group while you're there, this could help a whole lot as we're doing cleanup. So when you get down to the line that says payment group, I have Delta De oh, Delta PA, all, it, it, you can only do all caps, Delta PA. And here's a little insurance lesson for you. Delta of Pennsylvania covers claims from uh, Washington, D.C., um, Delaware, and uh, New York State. So if you have a payment group called Delta PA, um, if anybody out there is using uh, bulk payments, sometimes you can't do a bulk payment because you've got it on two different Delta Dentals, Delta, Delta Dental of PAs or Georgia or whatever, but there are payment groups because PA, New Jersey, I'm sorry, yeah, PA, New York, uh, DC and Delaware all come out of Delta Dental of Pennsylvania. So if you have a payment group called Delta Dental of Pennsylvania, you can actually do a bulk payment for all of those insurance companies as one bulk payment. So while we're cleaning up, you might as well put your payment groups. Um, there is a payment group for Delta Dental at least, um, PDF on their on Delta's website. So if you do a Google search for Delta payment groups, you can actually find it. And as you're doing this cleanup, you can make those groups cleaner and be able to do bulk payments a little easier. All right. While we're here, look at your claim payer IDs. Make sure that those are correct. Again, uh, do you know the FAQ for the um, claim payer ID, Diana? Yep. Let me look it up really quick. Yep. So there's a claim uh, payer ID, and Diana's going to give us the. Um, the, the FAQ to get to it. Now, I will tell you, um, I've linked the FAQ in the in the group, but that um, that link goes bad because that list is updated on a regular basis. So, you know, I, people are always saying, you know, I click the link and there's nothing there, but it as it get up gets updated uh, on a regular basis, there's a new list, so it doesn't always work. It is, yep, it's FAQ 2453. 2453, and that's current. And again, it, I don't know, it, does that, you know if that number changes when it updates? So we will, yeah, so the FAQ number doesn't change, but we update the payer list within that FAQ. Okay. So yeah, so as long as you have the link to the FAQ, it will always be the most up-to-date. Like right out, out there right now, we have the list for March of 
you know, this year. Perfect. So it's been up recently. Okay. So, it, you know, everybody should be going to that list, making sure that your claim payer IDs match what's in the system. Now, if you're using Renaissance slash remote light, I don't think they use the claim payer IDs in the same way. Um, don't hold me to that because I'm not a, a I Renaissance. Would say not. <laughs> I would say not. Yeah. So they're going to do their own thing. But if you're submitting claims through um, electronic services through the PTC, um, you definitely want to have this number in here. And so you guys know, if you're using a generic claim pair ID, for one, you won't be able to use real-time eligibility properly. Um, and the other thing is you're, it, you're slowing down your claims and you're, it's, I think it's another nickel if you don't, you know, if you're using the generic right. claim pair ID. So it's costing you a nickel yeah. more every time you submit a claim. So uh, yeah, you can still submit the claim electronically, but they'll drop it to paper if you don't have the payer ID in there correctly. And Andre's right, it is more expensive. So it's a good idea to make sure those are all up to date. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and as a as a uh, Patterson stockholder, I appreciate the extra nickel, but please don't <laughs> please save it for the office. <laughs> so yeah. all right. And just just for you guys, we're talking about FAQ a lot. If you don't know how to get to FAQ from within EagleSoft, if you if you hit F2 on your front screen, it will give you labels on all the different things you can click on in that picture, that front office picture. And there's one labeled help over on the far right hand side. You can also get to it by going to the online menu and selecting FAQ. Or if you are at any internet browser, type in pattfaq.com and it will take you there. So just want to make sure everyone knew how to get there. Perfect. I'm glad you did. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I always say the, the, the pictures that are on the front desk, the actual picture of the front desk, if you click on that, it'll it'll get you to the FAQ. And then the operatory, if you click on the, the diploma that's on the, the bottom, it'll take you to the FAQ page two. Uh, there's a link there too. So, um, And then while you're there, there's a NEA payer ID also. So you might as well get that and we'll put a link somewhere. So you guys have the FAQ for the NEA payer ID. But those two things are the process of getting this stuff cleaned up. Um, it, it's, it's a great tool. Um, while we're here, I'm going to talk about the fact that there is a notes field for the in, the insurance company. Um, don't bother putting anything in there unless, you know, it's not like the olden days where we used to put a name like, you know, contact Sally because she was a great person to talk to. You're never going to get Sally again. So don't bother putting notes in there um, and, unless it's very specific to that insurance company. Um, there's no reason to put a note there. It just is just extra work for you. So t save yourself a couple steps. Uh, so while we're now that we're done with the insurance company, let's jump over to um, employers. So we're going to go to the same place that we started before, which was list. And then one thing I want some, everybody to see as we're doing this, before you click on the word employer, read through that. It says employer slash coverage list. And I want to be really clear about this. People are always asking me, well, what do I put Medicaid under? Because Medicaid is not an employer. Medicaid is coverage. So yes, it says on the screen, employers slash coverage. And I want to be real clear. Um, these are employers or coverage sources. AARP is not an employer. Well, actually they do employ people, but most people who have, who we see uh, have insurance or coverage through AARP. So make sure you see that uh, so that you understand as we're going through this list, this is not only employers, but also coverage sources. All right. Um, and once we're in the list, I'm going to edit one on my side just so you guys can see. Um, the neat thing is, and I correct me if I'm wrong, was it version 18 where we got the ability to search by group number? Do you know? I don't I'll have to look that one up. I was thinking it might have been 17. So, okay, yeah. Look. Yeah, well, it was prior to me retiring. So it was either, it, uh, my, <laughs> la my last one was 18. So it had to be either one, 17 or 18. So you might be right. But so now we have the ability to sort by, you know, if you're on anything, let's just call it anything after 17, you should be able to search by group number, which means in the little find box at the top of the employer coverage list, if you click on the header that says group number, if you click on the word group number, we can now search by um, group number. So good, quick, easy way to start this cleanup process. If you just type 104 in that group, um, you are gonna find all of your federal employers. So FEP 104 would have group number 104, and you're gonna see 
all of your 104s listed together and right under that you're going to see your 105s again federal employees and now we can start to clean up that list because when you go back to the name you're going to see things like u.s postal service you're going to see um you know uh federal government retirees you're going to see all these random names but now we can go through the process of cleaning up this list to say federal employee program employees or whatever you want to call it, but be very consistent with the way you do it. U.S. Gov employees, something like that. So now as we're searching for them, we're going to be able to find it. One thing that's really important about this cleanup process is as we clean up the employers, all right, the most important thing is, you know, you don't want to clean up one FEP 104 program and then have the other 15 out there who aren't cleaned up because as new patients come in, somebody's going to grab the ma mail handlers and somebody's going to grab the retired employees and somebody's going to grab something else. And if you've only cleaned up one, <laughs> you're not going to get much headway in this. So search by group number, look for group numbers, and then go back and let's start editing the, editing the, the employers. You're exactly right, Andre. It was added in version 18. 18. Good. Okay. You have a good memory. No, I have a terrible memory. I just, that, that's the last one I, I was working with. So that's <laughs> I knew it had to be 17 or 18. I had just a 50-50 chance I was right. I tell you, that's, my whole world is just like being Google. I mean, sometimes the first, the first result is not right. <laughs> sometimes you have to look right. for the next one. All right. So, um, all right. Now, as we look at employers, um, so I'm going to open up uh, on my end, my employer who I've named aptly. AARP, which should be one of the first ones on your list, um, AARP, after the name of it, I put um, in brackets uh, a date code. And that date code allows me to know when was the last time somebody in my office updated the benefit information in that employer. All right. Now, I'm going to take a step back because I, I hear the question, even though nobody even posted it in the group, I hear the I hear where this question is going to go. Well, how can you do that? Isn't that going to mess up the name of the employer? Isn't that going to mess it up when I send it to insurance companies? Well, I just answered that two seconds ago because I told you, you've had in the system mail handler, retired employee, you've had things like that in there for years that weren't correct and you've been getting paid. So by adding these number codes, you're not going to mess up the name for the insurance company. Because believe me, they don't look at the name of the employer. They look at the group number, they look at the social, they look at those things, but you're not gonna mess up the name of it. You're going to clarify it for your practice to be able to understand how to better utilize it. So um, what I do, and I'm gonna, I'll make sure that there's a link, there's actually a link in one of the, uh, the other pages, the cleanup page, but Create your own in-office sort of nomenclature, just like we talked about for the recall notes, that has different letter codes. So, you know, Andre World. I put uh, the date code. So I'm looking at my AARP right now, and it has March of 19. It says PID, which means I need to have a patient identification number, pa patient member ID. Um, so I know that if a patient comes in and I don't have their patient ID number, I've got to have that in order to process a claim. I would put things like NE, and in my office, NE means no eligibility available for this particular insurance company. Um, and then I put things like NA for no assignment of benefits. If the benefits are going to go to the patient, I want to know that as soon as I see the name of the employer. So um, I'm looking at my screen here. It says 319 PID. Patient comes in. I realize immediately this information is more than a year old because it says 319 and I need a patient identification number. So I'm gonna do my due diligence to update this information and get it as clean as possible. That makes sense? Those are great ideas <laughs> for using that name. Cool. Now, do you know if, there, if the address phone number fields have any bearing in anything? I've always said no, but I don't know. Do you have any idea? I would say no. I haven't heard of any issues with um, the, you know, the address not being completely accurate. Yeah. You know, especially when you're submitting claims. I mean, it's all insurance company information. You know, where if you're happening to be mailing one, so. <laughs> right, and if they, if they worked at a you know an Exxon station, who cares? <laughs> you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter that where they work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So perfect. Okay. So now let's go over to the right column, and then we have group name. 
again, I've never put anything in that group name field because I already see what the name of the employer is. So I save that step, go right down to group number. Um, and again, let's be very consistent. We're going to put every single digit that we saw on the EOB. Yeah, you might see it on the insurance card, but if anybody's been in dental long enough, they know that Delta has group number one, two, three, four, five, dash, and then four digits. But when we get an EOB back, there's five digits. Um, I, th you know, that may be a trick that they're playing, who knows. But uh, what I do is I make sure that I update everything based on EOBs, because EOBs mean we got paid. So I always go back to my EOB to find group numbers. But just like if your social security number starts with a zero, you don't leave that off when you file, file your taxes. So if a group number starts with a zero, put the zero in there. All right? It's an important part to their you know, number sequencing. So make sure you include it. Um, if it if it adds 10 minutes to the processing of your claim, you know, don't, don't let them add another 10 minutes to it. So um, the next thing, deductible and maximum. Um, a lot of people ask, I don't know if you, you see this question come through some of the chat, you know, the, the, the questions you see through PTC. People are always asking me about being able to see if a deductible has been paid or not. Um, I, I, I don't necessarily know if we've had that question, but I can see how it's important, very important. Yeah, but you know, especially now with, again, I'm going to say the modern versions of EagleSoft, where in the, um, the walkout, we can see if a deductible has been met or not, we can see remaining deductible, remaining balance uh, right in the walkout. So you can tell if the deductible has been met within your office. Of, of course, if they are coming from another office, you couldn't tell, but we can see that. So you really don't need some sort of red flag, you know, showing deductible met or something like that. Uh, a lot of people ask about that. So I figured I'd ask. Um, and then the next step down is beginning month. And let, let's- That's us, very important. <laughs> it is. And, you know, we'll talk about this for a sec. Um, beginning month, so many people who are on the front lines of doing the day-to-day -day work in the dental office, um, who may even be getting information about benefit, remaining benefits, um, but they might not be the people who do the end of month processing. You wanna talk about why that's important <laughs> when it comes to end of month? Yeah, I mean, I think when you think about all of our end of period processing, end of day, end of month, end of year, um, it's very important so that you can have a specific financial record, you know, for that period of time. So you want you want to be able to say, okay, what you know, what was my production collection within this day? But also how to group all those days together and say this was that, you know, that was that month period. So it's very important um, for you to, you know, for you to continue doing that end of period processing. I'm going to put a plug in for EagleSoft 21. If for anybody that has not installed it yet. Um, if you want, if you have it and you want to install it, call support. They'll give you a license number for it. But it has automated end of period processing, so you can actually schedule when you want to run end of day, end of month, of end of year, and then you don't have to remember to do it before you leave in the evening or the morning before you start the next, you know, the next transaction posting. And a lot of people forget about month, you know, month end and year end, so you can schedule all of those. Is is the um, the check mark for update remaining benefits pre checked in that? I, I don't have version twenty one, so I haven't. I, I've seen uh, it, but only screenshot. Because I, you know, I want to make sure that that's actually going to, going to update that information for them. Yeah. So what you can do is when you, you know, when you schedule your end of period processing to to run, you actually have access to all of the same you know, automated processing that you have today. So you set that, you set when you want it to run and then what you want to actually have happened during that. So absolutely reset insurance balances during end of month processing is available for that automation piece of it too. Awesome. But I think the, the thing to think about with resetting insurance balances is that's something you should do every month. Yeah. And you know, the number correlates with the calendar month of the year. So you know, if you reset it for one to one, that's resetting it for anyone that has an anniversary date, any employer with an anniversary date of January. So when you run into month for January, you do one to one. When you do it for February, you do it, you know, for two to two. And most employers or more, most coverages reset in January, but that's not the case. You've got to remember to run that every time you run it into month. And it, 
if no employers have that reset during that month, no big deal. You write it anyway, but nothing, you know, no harm done for sure. Yeah. And what I always tell offices is, is it, especially if you're in the Northeast uh, or Midwest, you know, if you're in an area where it's cold, you can almost guarantee that any union plan will not roll over in December because <laughs> they don't want to strike in December. <laughs> so right. Almost every Northeast, you know, Midwest area where there's snow, uh, typically those union plans will never roll over in January. You know, school teachers, it's usually August or, you know, September. You know, those kind of plans, you can almost guarantee that if those plans are based on a union, they're never going to typically roll over in January. So that's kind of my Northeast, mid, mid, uh, mid-state mid step. Uh, I almost always guarantee that they're not going to roll over there. So, um, And then let's go through also when we're cleaning up this, this is a great opportunity. And this is something you'll see in the Facebook group. You know, this is a great opportunity now for those questions about um, frequencies. There is a, uh, in your edit employer screen, there is a box. And we're talking about the column with all the buttons on the far right that says notes. This is where you're going to put the notes in about, how often somebody can have bite wings, those kind of things. That's where you're going to put these notes. Um, you know, until we have a feature that allows us to be able to do um, frequencies, that's where I would suggest that everybody put those notes uh, so that you can see how often we can do profies. You know, if there's a five-year exclusion on crowns, those it's a great area to store that information because it's going to be specific to this employer, to this group number, to this insurance company. So it's a great place to put that info. And the nice thing about the little notes button, and you'll see this throughout Eagle Soft, is that when there are notes in there, you'll have squiggly lines on the icon. If there are no notes, it will be blank. So that's a great visual for you to know, hey, I should go in there and take a look. There's some notes. Yep. All right. And, you know, I'm going to take a minute just to catch up with so people who um, are just coming into the chat, maybe, you know, they uh, are, came in late. I want to let you guys know that... Uh, it, you obviously you see me, but you don't see Diana. Uh, Diana Boris is um, she's the customer experience manager. Is that what it is? Is that the title now? Oh, I'm doing a whole lot of new stuff, but that, that works for today. <laughs> okay, and, and we've known each other for uh, let's just say we've known each other for uh, ten years back when we were teenagers. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So we've known each other for, uh, you know, over a decade. And, uh, you know, Diana's one of those people who she follows the group. And, you know, the th I love the fact that it, when you guys struggle, you know, there are people at the PTC who are seeing that um, and are, are, you know, are getting on top of it and making sure that you guys know. And just like what we're going through right now, this is, this is, you know, historic, what we're going through right now. This, um, this was like when we when we started doing this a couple of days ago, we, we immediately said we've got to do something like this in order to get out to the users of the software. So I was just thrilled to have the, the ability to, to do this for you guys today. And I, uh, I think we have to, we're going to do as many of these as we can. Um, but let me there are a couple of questions that just came up in the group. Um, do you have a good template for that? I'm assuming you mean for frequencies. Yes, if you just go into the Facebook group, I'm, I'm answering the question, assuming the question. Um, if you go into the Facebook group in the search bar and type in frequency, you'll find there's a bunch of people who put um, uh, their templates. I have one that I have. Um, it, it can't be done as an auto note, but I just keep it as a text document like if you use WordPad or something like that, that's pretty quick to open. I use a WordPad document that I put on my desktop and I just copy and paste that frequency note into the notes field. And it's basically set up like an auto note where I can fill in the blanks of profies per year, how often a full series can be taken, you know, do they downgrade composites, uh, how long can before I can replace a crown. And I, I set it up so that it's, it's laid out in such a way that the information that's most important is at the top. So hopefully that answers your question. Lisa, Brandy said a frequency indicator would be amazing. Okay, Brandy, get on that. Make it happen. So <laughs> all right. I haven't noted. Yep. I haven't written down. I, I'm sure that comes in all the time. Uh, also, if someone is, has a waiting period, again, waiting periods are another thing that needs to be there. But waiting periods need to be part of something. Okay, so waiting periods are a two-part thing. If there's a waiting period, that that note should be, again, as part of the patient's notes. Now, we also have to put in um, some information about when patients are eligible, but that's something that you need to put in as a note in the patient's account history. 
So typically I'll have a, a note when a new patient joins the practice and there, you know, again, I have admin auto notes. I have something that goes in immediately when a new patient calls, why they come to the office, what, what, their, what was their history. Um, but there, I also show information of, uh, not as not in that note, but last FMX, last uh, Panorex, those things go um, into the software so that in the same way, if we processed an FMX or a Panorex through EagleSoft, it would show in the chart on the bottom right hand side. I actually will post some things in my system so that it automatically shows. And, you know, we'll, I can I can link those things out there, too. Uh, but you'll uh, Brandy, hopefully you'll see that in the Facebook group. Um, let's see, is there an easy way to view employer notes? Yes. So a couple things, if you're in the, um, chart, all right. So typically the people who want to see those notes are the clinical side of things. All right. Um, if we're working on the patient, we can click through. Yeah. It takes a few clicks, but we can see that. Um, but there's actually, I'm going to see if I can bring this up. Um, in the, insurance information screen in the drop down in the account screen. Do you know what I'm talking about, uh, Diana? Um, that's what I was trying to pull it up too. Yeah. I mean, I know from the edit patient, you can, you know, click on the employer link and get to it fairly quickly there. Yeah. yeah let me look at the account and see. In the employer. Uh, no, it's not there. I was looking at the, the drop down for insurance information to see if those employer yeah. notes show up, but they don't. Okay. So, you know, and again, I always try to play that game, you know, you know, the old name that tune, I can name that tune in less than five notes. Um, I always try when I'm in EagleSoft to see if I can find something in less than two clicks. So if you're in the account screen, if you click on the icon at the top for chart and then click the insurance button on the right side. So again, I got there in two clicks. So from account, uh, chart, insurance, I'm there. So, you know, that may be the quickest way to get there, but I'll check around and see if there's a quicker way. But that's if you, for Charlotte, if that's the easiest way to see the notes, if you're on the practice man management side of things, that might be the easiest way. If you're in the, the chart, there is an insurance button on the right side of the chart, bottom right hand side of the chart, uh, the odontograph, you know, um, you can actually click that and the clinical side of things can see uh, that insurance note. And the great thing is when you open yeah. it, it's highlighted in blue already. So they get an immediate. From the account, if you go to patient summary, same thing, you can click on insurance info and get those notes too. Okay. So either one. Is it from account patient summary? <laughs> Yeah, from the account window, yep. go to the patient summary icon, which is also a great tool in EagleSoft that people probably don't use a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. And I, you know what? I don't even think I have it. Oh, there it is. I have it. And oh, it's, yeah. Probably, yeah, it's like a picture of a hand yep. holding a patient. <laughs> uh, where's an... Oh, and then you go insurance info. Gotcha. Insurance info. Yep. Got it. Okay. Yep. So I want to put, I want to, I'll do a couple screenshots on what we're talking about so people can see that when we're done out here. So good question, Charlotte. Uh, yeah, because I, I always tell people that that's available to them. And then they're like, yeah, but I have to go through edit patient in order to see that. So yeah, you can get to it a, a lot quicker. So, um, and guys, so you know, I think, um, what time are we scheduled to to the end this? Was it 1.30? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I think we're getting close, yeah. All right, so just so you guys know, um, if you have any questions, um, this chat will stay open. So if you post in the chat, um, I'll see it. And actually, no, what I'll do is I'll close down this chat and I'll, I'll post this back in the Facebook group to uh, to be able to keep that live because the chat's hard to, to follow. It's a weird thing the way it goes. Uh, but um, you... we can post the screenshots out yep. in Facebook page, yeah. Facebook group, things that we covered today for sure. Exactly. So um, if you guys have any other questions, you know um, how to get in touch and you guys uh, should have the PTC's number on speed dial. And you know, because this is a fluid situation, I'm sure there's more and more information coming up. Diana, do you wanna talk quickly in the last, let's call it a minute and a half, um, that we have about what Revenue Well is doing uh, to try to help some folks too? Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, let me, so for those of you that are, 
using revenue and have, have revenue well in your practice. Now that, you know, a great time to invest in it if you haven't already. They have done some very specific things relative to, um, you know, some of the templates and some of the features in um, Revenue Well. So let me let me pull those up here really quick, and I'll tell you about them. Here we go. So they have uploaded a couple of templates into their custom campaigns. So if you think about, you know, your patient communication, you know, right now, even if you are just seeing emergency patients. Um, or limited, you know, limited patient activity. Now's still a great time to keep um, to keep yourself engaged or keep your practice engaged with your patients and let them know what's going on. So custom campaigns and revenue well is a great way to do that. So they've uploaded a couple of COVID-19 specific campaigns out there. They also released Messenger Mobile last night. So that will give you the ability to use Messenger as part of the mobile app. Um, and it is for iOS only, so Apple only, but they will be having an Android version out, they said, within the next few weeks. Um, and we can certainly call into, you know, PTC support team and we can certainly help you with that, that feature. The other nice thing I know a lot of customers have been asking for this is that they deployed a change to increase the number of characters and symbols that can be sent in a text campaign or an SMS campaign up to 1500. So now you can use that feature of Revenue Well to communicate more information to your patients, you know, using the SMS messaging app. So I'm sure you can go out to, if you guys are on Revenue Well Rockstars, Facebook group, go out there. I'm sure there's lots of information about these changes um, out on that Facebook group. Cool. Yeah, I, I, and I, I that's I people are always like, well, which which of the patient communication tools do you like the best? You know, I, I love the responsiveness of Revenue Well to changes like this. Um, and, and you know, yeah, I love Alex and I love the folks who work at Revenue Well, but you know, I, I love the software because it's kind of like it's it's like the the stereo that came in your car. I mean, it's built to to work with the car that you have as opposed to something that was kind of you know, hobbled together in order to make it work. So, I, and I love the way that they're they're responding to what's going on right now. So, um, hopefully, you guys are, got a lot of uh, info out of this chat. I'm going to let Diana go back to her desk, uh, and I've got to take care of some issues on my end. So, thank you guys for being part of this chat, and we're going to try to see uh, how we do some more of these things going forward. So, I really appreciate yep, everybody absolutely. being here. Yep. Thank you, everyone, and we'll get some more information posted out in the Facebook group about the things we covered today. So thanks for your time and everyone stay safe and healthy. Take care guys. All right, bye-bye.